Welcome to the master class. Hello. So glad that you're here. Yay. You know, it took me years to figure out the answer, the secrets to healthy, sustainable weight loss. It took me all the training in grad school about how to look at the research and then finally looking at the research to see what works. Yeah, so it took me years to find the answers. And then I, it makes me want to cry every time I think about it. And I'll tell my story a little bit. But um, it changed my life in such big ways and that I've been helping other women and some men change their lives in these really big ways and it just it matters if we know how this works or not it matters if we keep doing things that don't work over and over and over it matters to our heart and our soul it matters to our body and our health and our longevity so it's been really important to me to figure out how do i help other people learn this and how do i even condense a bunch of information down into just a couple of hours so people can go okay i see how different it is i see that i'm not close enough and i'm not gonna be close enough on my own probably it's just really really hard in our current environment so that's a lot of what i'm teaching today i want you to understand why uh, weight loss is not about starving yourself and we don't want to just keep trying harder at the things that don't work i want you to know how much easier and more natural sustainable weight loss can be than all those things we're trying out there I want you to know how to avoid the number one mistake most women are making when it comes to weight loss and how to take all the guesswork and confusion and stress out of eating so we can actually feel thoroughly nourished by food instead of stressed about food. Doesn't that sound amazing? Um, I really want you to be able to regain hope and confidence about living your best life for decades to come, right? All right. so. So I have been teaching this content for, I think, a year and a half or two years, and, and people have been getting transformative results. I just had somebody reach out to me a couple of weeks ago and say, after coming to your event and then getting on the phone with you, I have dropped 12 pounds. And I'm like, wow, um, just from this free content that I'm offering. So I really did design it to be transformative. So I hope that you can stay for the two hours. All right, so what we're gonna do today, I want you to understand why dieting doesn't work. You probably actually have to eat more. And I know that sounds like, what are you talking about? That can't be the case, right? Um, it really is the case. And I hope that even though I may not be able to share all the nuances of how to eat differently, I want you to at least see why dieting, you know, weight loss diets are not the way to go why they're not working for you, why they're not going to work for you for sustainable weight loss. I really hope that you come away quite clear about that today. I am sharing today how drinking affects our weight because we have wrong ideas about what a difference it's making and they're leading us to make choices that are not serving us. I want you to understand why we don't actually know how healthy eating or weight loss works, even though almost all of us think we do. Like this used to always work. It's just not working anymore. I want you to understand why that is. And the top three mistakes made, making it harder than it has to be. It does not have to be this hard. By the way, if you're just joining us, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. Please uh, tell us in the chat what your name is and where you're joining us from. All right, so I want to tell you the big picture here. The big picture is that things have really changed in our society about how we're eating and how we're trying to lose weight. The picture on the left is from the is a beach picture from the 1960s, which is when I was a little kid and most of us were not overweight or obese. Right. Most of us now are overweight or obese, 80 percent of us. And it's climbing. Right. It's getting worse and worse and worse. And yet so more of us are on diets than ever before, especially women over 40. And yet we're more overweight than ever before. So the way we're eating is very wrong. I'm going to share more about that. The way we're eating as a society has shifted very badly in a way that's making it very difficult for us. And the way we're trying to lose weight is messed up. It's super messed up. And I'm gonna really explain the issue with calorie cutting 
today. So UCLA study, UCLA researchers studied, they looked at research. So you'll hear people say all the time, oh, you've got to do keto. Oh, you've got to do intermittent fasting. You've got to do this, you've got to do that. It really works. And what are they saying when they say it really works? They're saying, I started doing this and I started losing weight. Plus what I'm reading, what I'm hearing about it tells me it works. Well, UCLA researchers wanted to look at how many of these things work in terms of sustainable weight loss. So if we look at long-term results, if we look at these people a year later, five years later, how many of them still have the weight off? And it's less than 1%. Makes me wanna cry because the way that we're eating and the way that we're trying to lose weight and the way that we're gaining weight and becoming overweight and obese is very tied to a bunch of health issues that are really serious that keep us really chronically ill for way too long until we die right so cardiometabolic disease like type 2 diabetes like high blood pressure and all the things that go with that heart disease our, our arterial disease right so there's all these cardiometabolic diseases that are keeping us really sick until we die and we're dying too early now we're dying earlier than we should be so yeah i'm sorry i'm emotional about this because i had developed a bunch of those issues myself and just all the women i know who are in this boat of I don't understand what I'm supposed to be doing because now I'm, I'm pre-diabetic or I've got high blood pressure, I'm on statins, et cetera, et cetera. And this just seems normal. And it's normal only in the statistical sense that this is how we're living because it's how we're eating and trying to lose weight. So the UCLA researchers, yeah, found that less than 1% of weight loss efforts result in sustainable weight loss. In fact, the best predictor of weight gain was dieting. Isn't that heartbreaking? Like how many times have you tried dieting and you feel like it's working or you feel like it used to work, but now you can't figure out how to sustain it. And that's just heartbreaking because figuring out how to eat so that we get sustainable weight loss so that our body just resets to a healthy weight and happily stays there is also a way of staying healthy. And so I really want you to understand the difference between this kind of temporary, I'm gonna lose weight and gain it back approach and the, I'm going to eat in a way that makes my body really healthy and happy so I can live sustainably at a much lower, healthier weight, right? So 80% of us are also developing high blood pressure or heart disease or high blood sugar or diabetes. And I haven't even mentioned two other diseases that have become very common and are very tied to the way we're eating, uh, dementia and cancer. So how is this? happening? How are we developing these chronic diseases that just seem normal now? And how is it tied to the way we're eating? So when researchers look into this, by the way, I'm so excited that when I'm going to do this big talk, I have a big mosquito bite right on my face. So send me some love. <laughs> you don't care, right? Thank you. <laughs> Dieting aggravates weight gain. It really does. And hopefully by the end of today, you'll have a much better understanding of this. So I do want you to know there's a way out of this disastrous situation and it's actually easier and more natural than you realize. There's a way of eating that absolutely works predictably and reliably for us. It's not hard. It's not hard to learn. It's not hard to do. It's not hard to do sustainably. It's just quite different. So the way I think of it is we have to step off the path we're on, the way that we're eating and drinking and onto a different path. Um, and it, how different it is depends on how you're eating and drinking right now. But for me, it was a big shift in my perspective and the, how I was approaching eating. And it turns out it's thoroughly enjoyable. It's not hard to do, right? Now, uh, I want to invite you to stay to the end because the first half of this program, I'm really teaching you what doesn't work. And I hope it's going to give you a lot of like clarity, I need to stop doing that and I need to stop doing this and a lot of hope. And I hope it's gonna really let you off the hook about why approaches haven't been working. Part of why I get emotional about this is we feel like it's our fault. And it's sort of how our society and how our doctors even treat us like, 
you know, you just got to eat less. No, that is not the answer. And I hope you'll get a much better understanding of that today. So the second half of the program, I'm going to really teach you the actual steps to healthy, sustainable weight loss. So the first half is what to stop doing. Don't do this. This doesn't work. And the second half is here's what does work, right? And I have worked really hard on how do I explain this to people so that they go, hello, that makes sense. I can totally do that, right? Because at first when I was explaining it to people, I was too circular and I was confusing people. So that's why I've been able to go from five hours to two hours. So I hope that you really find it valuable. All right, so one thing this program isn't going to do is give you tips. So one thing that I realized, because I study evidence-based practices for a living, like what actually works for helping people who wanna quit drinking what or quit smoking, right? What actually works for people changing habits like eating? I've been studying these things for decades. This is my career as a psychologist. How do you help people change things in their thinking and in their behavior to make their lives what they want their lives to be. So it isn't like, oh, I can't do this. This is too hard, right? I've been studying this for a long time. So what we study is evidence-based practices. What actually works, right? And that's what I finally did with healthy eating and weight loss. I got to age 55 and not doing very well uh, before I actually decided, you know what? You have expertise you could bring to this problem, right? So yeah, I was in this situation that that I'm talking about. That's partly why I get so emotional about it. I had gotten to, in 2014, I think I was 55 years old and I was, uh, I was working hard. I was doing my best. I was, I'm smart. I was reading labels. I was reading diet books and weight loss articles. I was reading so much stuff and trying so many things, trying so hard. And I was basically ending up more and more overweight. Uh, I was 60 pounds overweight by that point and just did not feel like me. I felt miserable about it. I was a nonprofit CEO. And I remember going to board meetings and trying to figure out, oh, how can I, how can I hide? how I look. Does anybody relate to that? It's painful. I remember honestly get, waking up in the morning being upset about my weight, waking, uh, going to bed at night being upset about my weight, avoiding all kinds of activities, right? And, and if you look at that 2014 picture, it's not just that I'm so much more overweight, but it's also that I just look kind of to me, I look kind of dead. Like I remember how hard I was trying this, that, and the other thing. And I just was not living the full life that I could be living. And as I was looking forward to my future, I was more and more worried. What is this going to turn out like? Like I, I had this dream. I'd be hiking in the mountains in my 80s. I'm this youthful, spry person. And I was looking in the mirror going, maybe not so much. Do you ever have this experience where you see a picture of yourself? Like I saw a picture of myself speaking at an event and I was like, how did they make me look that overweight? I don't look like that. Like I was avoiding mirrors. I wasn't letting people take pictures of me for a long, long time. It's a painful place to live, right? So everything that i did it still traumatizes you yeah kristen had the same experience right we both had this experience of seeing ourselves on a stage and going how did you make me look like that good to see you here kristen so i felt like someone who knew how to lose weight right i felt like someone who knows how to eat who knows how to lose weight in my 20s and 30s everything worked and so I couldn't understand why other people were overweight. They must be eating so much because I'm just not that careful with how I eat. I just do common sense, healthy eating and it works. And if I gain a little weight, then I just cut back on my eating for a while or I exercise more and everything seems to come back together again. And then in my 40s, all of that stuff stopped working. And I started, you know, I'd lose weight and then I'd gain back more maybe lose a little weight and gain back more. And it was just getting worse and worse and worse. And along with that, I was diagnosed with prediabetes. I was having more and more trouble walking. I had so much pain and inflammation that really started from high school, became big problems with back pain and neck pain. And by that 
picture that you saw in 2014, I really could barely walk anymore because I had so much pain and inflammation in my feet. So I had scheduled surgery a couple of times for that, right? Lots and lots of trouble. So I doubled down on what I knew worked. I just need to eat less. I just need to exercise more. And it was not producing good results at all. And it makes me think about the fly in the window, right? You get a fly in the house and it's trying to get out, just keeps crashing into the window trying to get out. And you're like, dude, that's gonna kill you, right? And that's what it felt like to just keep trying dieting like this is not working what is it something wrong with me and truthfully our society treats us like it's something wrong with us if we would just eat less i just really want if nothing else to knock that idea out of your head because it's not about eating less most of us actually find we have to eat more to get good results and hopefully by the end of this session you'll have a better idea of this so I finally decided, you know what, Jenny, the popular media is misleading you. You're not getting good advice. That's obvious. This is not evidence-based stuff that you're finding out there. You're a scientist. Go to the research literature and find out for yourself, what do we know about eating and health and weight? And it took a long time. And I have to say, I was crying a lot. <laughs> while I was studying this stuff. I was arguing with the research sometimes, right? So as I started studying the research about what actually works, confusions started clearing up, right? And I started getting some uh, understanding of the nuances, right? So I knew we're probably supposed to be eating more fruits and vegetables. Okay, I know that. I think I do that pretty well now. And as I started finding the, the quantities that really made a difference and the nuances, then I could start doing what actually worked. It was totally different. I started appreciating I've got to give my body what's actually going to make it healthy and happy if I want different results, right? I didn't even tell you I had this big wake-up call. A bunch of you have heard this story, but the big wake-up call that made me start doing something different, go to the research, is I started working as a psychologist in nursing homes. And I'm in my 50s. I'm figuring these are really old people and I'm going to help them, you know, with this transition of life. They were not really old people. They were not much older than me. Most of the people in nursing homes are in their 60s and 70s. And most of the conditions that have landed them there are these lifestyle conditions that relate to our eating and drinking more than anything else. So that freaked me out. That's why I got like, okay, I'm gonna quit looking at the popular media and I'm gonna go directly to the research because it was like a part-time job, right? I'm going to my job every day and then at night I'm studying this research stuff and figuring out how to change my eating. But as I did change my eating and my whole approach to eating, like instead of what can I get away with? Come on body, just cope with this. I started trying to figure out how do I actually help my body do its best and quit arguing with reality here, right? I should be able to have wine at night if I want it. What should have to do with it? What is my body actually going to do with what I'm putting in there? Is it going to help? Is what I'm putting in my body going to help it or harm it? Just a big shift in my approach. And as I did this, I got really clear what specific quantities are going to lead me to be able to lose this excess weight, reverse my prediabetes, maybe even lose a bunch of these symptoms of, of disease and decline, like so much pain and inflammation, right? And so as I did this, I started seeing the weight just falling off. I was eating more and the weight was falling off. I was like, this is awesome. I like this, right? And the, my health started healing right and so i had had this terrible insomnia that i just thought i had to live with the rest of my life i'm just going to look at the chat while i'm interrupted here you can totally relate to what i'm sharing on the excess weight yeah it's painful right um it's it may be more painful than we think it should be right i felt like i'm not that i'm a natural kind of girl i'm not that concerned about my looks i've never been into makeup or or spending a lot of money on clothes or any of that stuff but i want to feel well and i still want to be attractive i want to feel comfortable going out and doing things i wanted to date again and i was putting that off for a very long time and at some point i had to say to myself you know what you're not going to be younger and skinnier that's not the direction you're going you know just get out there and start dating so yeah so my insomnia 
went away, just reversed, right? The pain and inflammation I had lived with since high school went away, evaporated. I had no idea that could happen. Like my sleep got better. I had had all this terrible brain fog, like my brain functioning was slowing down and muddy and that cleared up. So changing my eating changed all these things in my body in addition to the weight just falling off. So now like, uh, you know, this is almost 10 years later. I don't know, is it that many years? I'm not good at knowing, at understanding how much time has passed, but it's been many years since I lost this weight, since I changed my eating and lost this weight. My body is happy to maintain this weight, which is awesome. That's completely different from what we're finding when we do calorie cutting or other kinds of approaches to force our bodies, right? Weight loss got so natural and so easy eating this way and the prediabetes reversed all these things, right? Uh, mood and anxiety issues that I had lived with for a long time also evaporated. And many of my, many of the women that I work with have told me that. So I'm even, even saving money. So I've been studying not only the population impact, uh, like the cost in our world to having these problems going on and on and on is expensive, right? It's billion, it's like $200 billion for obesity alone. And then if you, it's close to $200 billion for diabetes and something similar for heart disease and something and $150 billion cost for back pain. Like I had almost all of those. Um, and so these are very costly to our society, but what about to us as individuals? Well, I estimate just in the first year, I saved $4,000 on, on a whole bunch of expenses. Like I used to be sick. My immune system was messed up. I used to be sick and taking time off work um, probably four to eight weeks out of every year. It was really pretty bad. I ended up having to have a couple of surgeries related to those viruses that got worse and worse. We are harming our health with the way we're eating. It is worth learning to eat in a way that actually makes us healthy and gives us the natural, easy weight loss, right? I, not only do I eat this way every day, it's comfortable. I love eating this way every day. I've come to crave the foods that are good for my body where I used to crave the foods that, were, that are not good for the body, right? All right, so the number one mistake we're making, the number one mistake we're making is dieting. Uh, I'm just going to eat this tiny amount of food. Do you know that the people who are the most overweight and obese are often eating the tiniest amounts of food? It's, it's a no-win situation, right? You just keep cutting back and cutting back and cutting back, and your body is basically yelling and going, hello, we need nutrition here. Like cutting back what you're eating is not going to be the solution. I'm going to really try to persuade you of that in our time today. Um, when we are going to finally do what works, we have to leave behind what doesn't work. And as a psychologist, this is one of the first things I really started to understand is I got to help people understand to leave behind what doesn't work. So they're ready to learn what does work. Even observing myself, looking at the research, I could see I'm arguing with the research. And then it's only my training that made me say, quit arguing and try to do what the research says actually works. Just try it. You can go back to eating whatever you want to eat later. But in the meanwhile, how about trying to eat in a way that the research says will actually work for living as healthy as possible, right? For as long as possible. Like I couldn't hike in my 50s anymore. I could barely go for a 10 minute walk anymore. Now I'm hiking in the mountains again and can envision myself still doing this in my 80s, maybe my 90s if I take care of myself, right? So when we are, when we're dieting to try to force our body to release excess fat, it might work temporarily, but then our body's gonna fight back we're really missing this calories idea has been around for a hundred years. And you could say, when you look at the research, there's a hundred years of research proving it doesn't work. And what's weird is what the researchers do at the end of every study, which is they kind of say, um, here's why it must work, even though it doesn't look like it worked here. It must be that the participants weren't being honest with us, et cetera, right? And so 
uh, we have all this evidence that it doesn't work, but it's still the biggest thing that's being promoted. It's the idea that's been in our heads for our whole lives. We just have to eat less. It's what most of our doctors have been trained. It's what most nutritionists and dietitians have been trained. In fact, I have friends who are nutritionists and dietitians who say, bless you for doing weight loss because what they taught us doesn't work. I know, this is just a really wrong idea. So let's think about how our body actually does work, what we know about our body. Our body has a priority on homeostasis, right? So if you think about when you get overheated, what does your body do to try to bring your temperature, your body temperature down? Anybody? Right, our body sweats. It's trying to cool us down, right? Yes, thank you, Karen. Good to see you here. Um, and what does it do if we get overly cold, if we get really cold? It shivers to try to generate more heat, right? So there's, yeah, <laughs> thank you, Lynn. Oh, good to see you here too. Um, so our body has ways of getting back to homeostasis. So if we don't eat enough, if our body perceives we're not getting enough nutrition here, what's our body gonna do? What have you observed that your body does? Has anybody noticed you get more hungry? Like if you exercise more, you get more hungry. That's because it changes the hormones in your body that regulate hunger and, and satisfaction, satiety, right? And so you start getting more hungry when you start eating less. You know what else it does, which you can't really exactly observe, is it slows your metabolism. So it burns less calories, burns less energy when you're sitting or sleeping even, right? So you're thinking, well, I'm just gonna exercise more. It's For one thing, it's gonna make you feel like I don't have the energy to exercise. And for another thing, even when you don't, you're not paying any attention, you're sitting, you're sleeping, it's burning less calories. Another thing it does is it changes your hormone functioning. So I want to talk a little bit about hormones because it's what I felt. It's my hormones. It's my age and my hormones. And that's what my doctor's telling me. That's why I can't lose weight now. That's, that's the big thing that changed in my forties. And that's why nothing works anymore. Our hormones do change. My hormones changed big. I had a lot of symptoms, right? But that doesn't mean we have to gain weight. What's happening is the way we're eating and losing weight in our society put together with the hormone changes are putting us in this doomed situation. So the part we can change is not necessarily how our hormones are changing. Some people go on hormone replacement therapies, et cetera. I didn't wanna do that, um, but it might be best for some people. In any case, what we really have control over is how we're eating and drinking. So it's how we're eating and drinking combined with our hormones that's leading to these, um, to these increases. So let me talk to you about a couple of other hormones that are being affected. So when we get hungrier, it's not like a, fa a character flaw. This is our body saying, hello, we need more nutrition here. We need more food. So it changes the hormones that tell us like leptin that tells us if we're hungry or not. And actually what researchers are finding is the, the functioning, our leptin functioning society wide is really messed up. Like we have leptin resistance. And what that feels like to us is I'm starving. I'm so hungry. This is a bit of a de disaster, right? We're feeling like we need to lose weight. We need to eat less and now we're starving. But that's what our body does in response to starving it. It needs, nutrition. And so that's one of the things that's going to change in our hormones. Another is we're going to get more cortisol. So anytime we're cutting our calories, we're eating less, might get more elevated cortisol. That's the stress hormone, right? That's part of what can affect our sleep. It's part of what can make us anxious and edgy. Uh, I think the reason that our cortisol is getting driven up is our body's saying, we better start looking for food. We better get amped up and looking, right? So we get hungry, we get feelings of anxiety. Another hormone that changes that's really big for what's happening for all these risk factors is our insulin functioning. And what that does is, so insulin directs the calories coming in to either go go towards energy or store fat. 
So we end up storing more fat. Something is dysregulated in our insulin functioning. It's something our body's doing to try to protect us from starvation. Really interesting things that I've been studying in the last year or so suggest that we flip a switch in our bodies. So researchers that study what is going on, that we're getting overweight, we're getting diabetes, we're getting high blood pressure and heart disease. What is going on? These things have increased hundreds of percents in our society. It looks like the same thing that happens in populations of animals where there's food scarcity, where there's a scarcity of nutrients, or it looks like bears getting ready to hibernate, you know, animals getting ready to hibernate start getting really hungry, right? It gets dangerous. I, I lived in Colorado for a long time. It gets dangerous to go into the mountains in September. You have to, if you're hiking out in the woods, you need to be aware of bears because they are hungry, they are foraging, they are anxious and driven, and they are trying to get fat as quick as possible. That's exactly what it looks like is happening in the human population now. So here's what it tells us. We are living in a low nutrition environment. So our bodies are feeling like they're starved and they're driving us to get more. So when we eat things that are processed, when we drink alcohol or soda, et cetera, or you know, coffee drinks with a whole bunch of syrup in them, a whole bunch of sugar, our body says, okay, it seemed like we were getting calories, but we didn't get any food. We didn't get any nutrition out of that, keep going. So I remember one of the things I would just keep going and going and going on. There were a lot of them, right? But popcorn was one. I would go to the movies and I would get this giant thing of popcorn and I'd be like, this is what I'm here for. I don't even care what the movie is, right? And I would look at it and go, that seems like too much. Like, I, I don't know that it's right to be eating that much. What if I, I remember one time I thought, what if you just check where you feel like you had enough? And so it was about this much across the top right? I know, right, Julie? They sell alcohol to go with the popcorn. That was a happy moment, right? Uh, so I noticed it was about the top inch and I felt like that was enough. However, the instant after I thought that, I, I went back at it and went all the way to the bottom and then thought about going to get more. So that's not gluttony. That's not some kind of sinful quality within me. That's what my body does in response to felt like we were eating, but we didn't get any nutrition there. So this is a we're in a disastrous situation in our eating environment right now because it's so full of low nutrition and no nutrition processed foods. In fact, that's now over half of what Americans are eating. So even those of us who feel like I eat pretty healthy, like if you look at other people, I'm eating pretty healthy. We're probably still too far off. I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. All right. So what I've been saying is our hormones are changing. What, what we're eating is changing. And the way we're eating is changing our hormone functioning in these really big ways. It's not all about estrogen. We talked about cortisol. We talked about leptin. We talked about insulin. So our body is storing more calories as fat. Our body thinks we're going into starvation right? We're in trouble, not because we're eating too much. We're in trouble because we're not eating enough of the nutritious things and we're eating too much of the highly processed, non-nutritious food-like substances. And they're cravingful. So that's what I call them. You can write this down if you want. People always ask me for it later. Chip niffles, cravingful, highly processed, non-nutritious food-like substances. It helped me to change what I called them. I used to call them treats. As long as I called them treats, I really felt like they were important to keep. And I just really changed my mind about that as I read the research. And as I started finding, I could crave the good things and quit craving these things that are terrible for me, right? All right, I wanna talk just for a minute about drinking alcohol because people have this idea. Now I can tell you more than, uh, I think it's about 80% or more of the women and some men that I help with healthy eating and weight loss have issues with drinking too. It's like, it's just part of what we've ended up doing over time. It felt sophisticated, it felt fun, like a way of letting our hair down. And now it's like, I really don't feel like I can quit this. This is, this is 
feeling very important to me. That's how I felt. I was really scared. How am I going to quit that and still have a good life? Right? I think that's what's giving me a good life. Well, I needed to be able to take a break from some of the craving for highly processed, non-nutritious food-like substances so that I could eat enough of the highly nutritious things and see what a difference it would make for my body, right? It, those things are crowding out the healthy things that we actually need to eat. And it's making a real difference for our health individually and as a population, a huge difference, right? So what's happening when we drink alcohol? Is it that it's empty calories? No, calories are not the key that you've been led to think they are. And I think it's a way of keeping us eating non-nutritious stuff, drinking non-nutritious stuff and going, I just need to manage my calories. And it ends up being like a problem within us instead of a problem in our food environment that we need to stand against. So it's not that it's empty calories. First of all, it's shutting off the fat burning process. So body, the body recognizes alcohol as toxic. And so it consumes the alcohol first. And then other food that we're taking in, it stores as fat. It knows it needs to process the alcohol as the first package of calories, right? So we see people are getting less fat burning when they're drinking alcohol. It's not exactly that alcohol is, it's causing that in an indirect way. Does that make sense? Doesn't matter. So just if, if you go and research this, it'll be like, well, it's not actually, it's not actually causing you to store excess fat, but it is if you look at the whole process. Um, it's shutting off the fat burning process. We don't want to do that, right? That's not serving us. It's also increasing hunger and appetite. So it's driving that those hormone changes. We especially tend to crave fatty and salty things when we're drinking alcohol. That's our body trying to get some, get fat in there to process instead of the alcohol, right? It also increases our cortisol. So one of the things about getting to homeostasis, alcohol is both a stimulant and a depressant. But once we start, our body starts to perceive the depressant effects, it goes, whoa, that's a lot. You know, you notice your brain slows down. You notice your thinking, your speech slows down, right? Your reaction time slows down. So that we kind of, that's why we drink. It's one of the reasons we enjoy drinking is we like that slowdown. I felt like someone who's like, go, go, go. And I look forward to my drink every night so that I can finally slow down a little bit. But that slowdown, your, your body perceives as, well, that was excessive. That's too much. I need to send cortisol in there to correct this. So we get this kind of uh, zigzag effect, right? This, I get, I get this stimulant. I, I feel pretty happy and then I feel calmed down. And then my body starts sending cortisol, which is why I start getting anxious over the next 20 minutes. And then I start thinking I could really use another drink right now. It's, that's why, that's a big part of why it's addictive, right? So it sends, so our body gets more cortisol when we're drinking that disrupts our sleep, makes us anxious and hungry, drives that whole cycle we're trying to avoid of oh, I really need to go eat something right now. And it also impairs our thinking and our judgment, right? Everybody knows oh, I don't stick to my diet when I'm drinking, right? Because it's shutting down, it's, it's at least slowing down that part of the brain. All right, so alcohol is not empty calories. It's not all about the calories. It's changing how our systems function, how we feel hungry, how we feel anxious, and it's shutting off fat burning. So it's better to focus on what's actually good for our body to eat and drink, not to focus on the calories. What does my body actually need right now? I want to do a thought exercise with you just to try to drive this point home that it's not about calories. Now, I've been studying this stuff for years and years, right? So how to give you this idea that I got from studying this stuff from years and years and years as fast as I can. So here's the thought exercise. You will hear out there, you just need to manage your calories. A calorie is a calorie. And I want to show you a, a couple of pictures to suggest why this might not be the case. So if you look at those two options, I, I was somebody who was super excited about 100 calorie snack packs. Oh, awesome, because all I got to do is manage my calories and I really want some cookies or I really want some pretzels, etc. 
but I want to make sure I don't go over my calories so that I can lose weight. Do you think your body actually handles these two foods the same? Do they do the same thing in the body? Do they affect your hormones the same? Not at all. Do they affect your gut the same? One of them feeds the good gut bacteria. The other one feeds the bad gut bacteria that are gonna yell for more sugar um, and make, makes your gut microbiome inhospitable to the good, uh, the good gut bacteria. So what else do the highly processed things do? Your heart, your liver, your kidneys. Do you think that both of those things do the same thing to your organs? What about your brain? They are doing very different things in your brain. One is hitting your brain with this high concentration of sugar and no fiber or very little fiber, right? Which is gonna give you this big dopamine hit. They're gonna feel like, whoa, that was good. And that's another thing your body has to try to correct for. Oh, that was too much dopamine. Uh, dopamine is a really, it's a feel good chemical. It's exciting. It feels like I need more of that. More, 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 more. I know when I would eat the 100 calorie pack, I was like, I need four more of these, right? Um, so it's also changing those hormones that tell us whether we're hungry or full. It's doing completely thing, different things in our body when we eat the 100 calories of highly processed, non nutritious food like substances versus when we eat the, the fruit. The, the whole fruit, right? Is it making sense that what the, cal what the food is matters more than how many calories the food has? That it's gonna make a big difference to our body which one we eat, right? Yes, it's gonna make a big difference for our weight. It's gonna make a big difference for whether we're at risk of diabetes and heart disease and dementia, because it's affecting our brain. It makes sense. Hi, Debbie, thanks for commenting. It seems almost absurd to think about it another way. I know it, I'm trying to make it clear that it's absurd. It's absurd what we're being told. It's not working. I'm going to cry again. So our eating and our dieting are the number one cause of overweight and obesity, of metabolic dysfunction. So the people who are experts like endocrinologists, the doctors who especially study this stuff, believe most of us now have metabolic disorders that believe most of us are insulin resistant. So we, it's not that we don't have enough insulin when we have type two diabetes or we're developing type two diabetes. It's not that we don't have enough insulin, it's that our body has blocked off the insulin receptors and now the insulin is floating around our body the sugars are floating around our body bumping into all of our organs this is hurting our body it's hurting our heart our brain our kidneys our liver etc right so and how is it that it's making us vulnerable to cancer so we have way more cancer in our current eating environment and at first, when I started learning that, I was like, I don't get that. How is it, how is it causing cancer? It's because I didn't have a very good understanding of how cancer is created. But let me give uh, just a quick summary of why. So our body is fighting cancer cells every day. And it needs good nutrition every day to do that well. If it's having to fight against highly processed, non-nutritious food-like substances in our system, like alcohol or cookies, um, it is, or, or the salty, crunchy things similarly, right? I think about the popcorn, there's like no nutrition in there, but a whole bunch of, uh, a whole bunch of chewing and eating and my body thinking nutrition's coming. No, it's not. My body really reacts to that. Uh, when I would drink a bottle of wine at night, my body's going, uh, I thought nutrition was coming. I got the impression nutrition was coming because we were eating, we were drinking, we tasted sugar, um, and then no nutrition came. And the body is constantly looking for, how do I make you get some nutrition now? How do I make you eat something? Um, getting to the idea that my body is either helped or harmed by everything I eat or drink really helped me. Everything I eat or drink either helps or harms my body. That was super helpful because I used to say to myself, okay, I know this isn't good for me, but it's just a little, I'm not gonna have that much. I'm gonna make up for it later. It's just a treat. 
I have a whole litany of those, I said to myself, and maybe you do too. And they just weren't true. They were, they were lies. They weren't true for my body. Starting to care about what my body needed made a huge difference. So here's what it looks like. Our body is trying to solve, our bodies are trying to solve the problem of a low nutrition environment that we live in. We're getting inadequate nutrition. So our body is saying, keep eating. I didn't get any nutrition yet. So when people think about, I'm gonna diet, I'm gonna lose some weight, I'm gonna eat less, you're gonna get more hungry, you're gonna get more anxious. And so it gets like, when you think about trying to lose weight again, it's scary, it's gonna suck. I'm gonna be really hungry, I'm gonna be really anxious, I'm gonna be really sad and deprived. And it doesn't have to be like that at all. In fact, if it's like that, you're probably using the wrong approach. You're probably using a terrible approach that isn't going to work anyways. So that's why I really want to help women and men understand. I got, I usually am mostly talking to women, um, I, but I want people to understand it doesn't have to be like that. You can lose weight in such an easy, natural way when you learn to eat in a way that makes your body really healthy and happy, right? So we need to leave behind the, the terrible advice that we've gotten about weight loss. We need to step away from the way people are eating in our food environment and find a healthier way to eat, right? We need to change our eating in a way that nourishes our body. And when you change your whole perspective this way, it becomes easy to do this. Not only that, you can thoroughly enjoy the nutritious foods when you quit putting the non-nutritious foods in there. They're taking over, they're crowding out the good things. They're making you feel anxious and upset and like, I can't stop eating. You don't need to feel that way when you eat enough of the nutritious foods. All right, so I've taught some of the ways that, uh, that our weight loss solutions are completely failing us. So for those people who are like, okay, I want to know how you could help me. I want you to know that I'm offering, I've made some times available in my schedule for slender breakthrough calls. I think there's eight available over the next week. I want to tell you what this is just briefly before I go on and finish, because I know some people will leave at the top of the hour and this is how you schedule it. And they do fill up. So I encourage you to to schedule a call if you know, I'd really like to talk with you about how this could work for me. Um, what we do on this call is look for what is the biggest roadblock for you and what has the greatest opportunity, the greatest sort of untapped potential for you to get a breakthrough in this area. Because what I find is most people are, most of the smart people who are drawn to me, who like to hear what works and what and why, you're already doing like 75 or 80 percent right and you're close enough that it feels like it should be working but you're far enough away that it's not you're not getting big results right and so i really want to help you figure out what's in the way of your breakthrough so what you get from this call is great clarity about what's the problem in your case and what's the next step what's the roadmap for you to get a breakthrough so grab a slot now. All the people I've helped get big results in this area have scheduled this appointment and they will tell you, some of them might be in here now, that it's the best decision they ever made, that it's a decision that ended up transforming their lives. And I've even, I told you at the beginning, I've even had people who came into my program who have gone away and gotten life-changing insights just from having this event and that call together. So I really invite you to join, to, to make a call with me for that. All right, so now I'm gonna finally move on and share uh, what does work. I've been sharing what doesn't work, like calorie cutting, like dieting. Um, most of the weight loss approaches out there, less than 1%, uh, sustainable weight loss comes from them. So this is something that I'm absolutely passionate about. We sh There's ways that work, and I want people to understand how they're completely different from the ways that don't work. So this is kind of a summary of the five steps. The first thing is you have to eat in a different way. That's what I've been talking about the whole time, right? I call it the slender way. It turns out there's four principles that add up to big results 
actually very clear and specific quantities that add up to, to great results, to sustainable results. And part of how that works is you flip the switch back in your body. I know this is sort of, it's an analogy, it's a concept, but it really looks like animals, including humans, that are in a low nutrition environment or that are about to go into hibernation, like a, a switch gets flipped in our body where we're now hungry, we're now anxious and foraging. You ever wander around the kitchen going, what do I feel like eating? It's like foraging behavior. I'm not sure that's really natural for humans, but it's very natural for bears getting ready to hibernate. Um, in this kind of environment, uh, we get this elevated blood pressure. We get elevated blood sugar, right? Not all of us get all the same things, but there's this package of things that happens when the switch gets flipped. So what happens when we eat the slender way is we flip the switch back. So our body goes, okay, we're getting enough food now. It becomes happy to release the excess weight, to burn the excess fat, and to take calories that are coming in and use them for energy. So people feel so much more energy doing this as opposed to eating too many of the non-nutritious things and not enough of the truly highly nutritious things. So we're flipping a switch in our body and our body naturally and easily releases the excess weight, heals the, so many of those things that we've been suffering with, right? And the next step is coming to crave the good. I'm gonna talk about these in a little more detail, but this one changes everything. When you leave behind the cravings for the bad foods, I mean, that's what people tell me all the time. Uh, you know, I think I know how to eat, but I keep craving the bad foods and the cravings take me back. Yeah, we need to let, let go of the cravings for the bad food and we need to come to crave the good foods. That's where it starts to get so easy and so effortless. I mean, even our sensory organs change, our gut microbiome changes, our brain changes so that it becomes easy to crave the things that are good for us. Does that sound like it would change everything? And then we achieve our slender, healthy weight, which is an awesome moment, right? I'll never forget going to buy size six clothes after being in a 16, 18 for years. And it was a totally different experience shopping for clothes, right? It's like, oh, these clothes are cute and I don't mind seeing myself in the mirror while I'm putting them on and just feeling like I can go out and do things again instead of feeling like hiding. Now, I'm not advocating anyone hide. I'm just saying that's where I was and a lot of people I know. And it feels really good to, to get to this weight. And then it's not hard to live slender for good. That's where the, this just becomes your habit. Um, when we achieve our slender, healthy weight, most of us add some food again. It's a tricky moment, though, where a lot of people go, I think I'll just go back to eating the way I used to eat in a way, right? I'm going to start adding this. I miss that. I'm going to eat that. And if we do that, basically, we're going back to eating in a way that flips the switch again, right? It's not a matter of, oh, am I eating too many calories now? It's am I eating enough of the nutritious things? That my body needs because the amount of food to eat to get weight loss is very predictable it's very it's very clear we know exactly how that works i follow hundreds and hundreds of people to know evidence-based this works for sustainable weight loss so getting to our goal weight is very predictable amount of quantities figuring out what's the amount to eat that will maintain our weight is a little bit more individualized so there's a little bit of a process there getting to your right eating amount and then it's a matter of just making that your habit to live slender for good your body is happy to maintain this weight just like it was happy to maintain your higher weight it gets happy to maintain this way. It's a complete game changer, right? So this is Lily. Some of you might know her. Um, she says, I was a healthy eater. I got lots of exercise. I loved the outdoors and being fit until menopause. I got my first top flash at 47 and one month later I was 13 pounds heavier. Everything I knew that used to work didn't work anymore. Does anybody relate to that? What used to work doesn't work anymore? She says, in fact, um, for 10 years, I was just getting heavier every time I tried to lose weight. She says, I quit drinking a bottle of wine every night and I didn't lose an ounce. Does anybody relate to that? 
I was freaking out. I was even avoiding seeing friends because I felt so uncomfortable with my body, with the sudden weight gain. When she, when she found me, she was just about to invest in uh, $8,000 in surgical solutions. And she thought, what if I try? What if I try what Ginny's teaching first? Now, as soon as she started the Slender for Good approach, she says, I immediately started losing weight and got to a great weight and it just keeps working and it feels like a miracle. She says, I had so many things right, but I didn't, I just didn't quite have the formula right. And I hear this from everybody. She says, one thing that amazed me, I wasn't hungry losing weight this way. I love eating this way and I'm not on a diet. It's just how I eat. So how did she do this? She got the whole formula, the exact specific plan. She was like ready to follow. Okay, I can totally do this. She's someone who started eating more. She quit trying to starve her way into submit her body to into letting go of excess weight. And she feels so happy and confident in her healthy fit appearance. Again, she's visiting friends again that she was avoiding. She's uh, training for a marathon. She thoroughly enjoys eating this way. So the parts of this, there's a proven effective eating plan. Uh, it, there are four fundamental principles. I've been mentioning two of them throughout this event. We really need to step away from craving full, highly processed, non-nutritious food-like substances that we're eating way too much of. And we really need to eat an abundance of highly nutritious foods. Now there's nuance to that, right? There, and there's specific quantities that add up to results, but just so you get a sense of what's actually going to work. So many people find just starting to do this in the first weeks and, and couple of months, they drop five, 10, 15 pounds, and it just keeps working, right? So I wanna address this question of, we already know how to eat healthy. I already know how to eat healthy. Almost everyone I meet tells me that. I already know how to eat healthy. Either it's just not working anymore, or I just can't stick with what works enough to make it work. I, I can tell you everyone I've met does not know. We do not know. We are just in a terrible environment for trying to learn what actually works. So our food environment is deranged. Animals, including humans, I think, have a net, an innate nutritional wisdom. Like innately, we know what we should eat. And what, what has worked for humans for thousands and thousands of years has now gotten very messed up in the food environment we're in, in this industrial food environment with so much processed foods. It's very hard for us to know. The fat-free craze that started in the 60s that led to the, the food, uh, to the government telling us what we should be eating every day ended up in a really weird place compared to where it started. Um, so scientists were saying, we've got to do something. We've got increased heart disease. We've got to do something about this. And they were making certain recommendations, but then the it became a very political situation, right? That was going to affect the, the food industry. And so that whole committee turned over to food industry executives. And what we ended up being encouraged to eat more than anything was highly processed grains. It's really fascinating history to read about how we ended up doing that. But this has ended up being a terrible, terrible, having terrible results for us. So the whole fat-free craze, most of us know now, that's not exactly the way we should go. Fat-free is not exactly the way to go. Um, I want you to know most of the information we're getting from our environment is misleading us in big ways. So we reduced our fat intake after that fat-free craze as a population from 45% of our daily intake to 35% of our daily intake, but we vastly increased processed foods, sugar, added sweeteners, and refined grains. So now, something that changed over the last 100 years, four of the top 10 causes of death have well-established links to our environment. And if you look at the things that contribute to uh, 
to serious disease across the world now. Diet, I mean, exercise contributes at about 3%. The effect of our food, of the way we're eating and drinking is over 30% contribution to death and disease worldwide. And in the Americas, I live in Mexico now, uh, most of my clients are in the United States or Canada, um, we're in the worst position of all. So from most people 100 years ago, even 60 years ago, most people in our environment being normal weight, now most people are overweight or obese. And we've got many hundreds of times increases in heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and dementia. As the American diet, the Western diet has spread all over the world, it has led to these kinds of increases. Here's another graph I wanna show you. So I would say a lot of us feel we're not eating that much sugar compared to other people. I don't eat that much sugar. But look at the increases in sugar consumption in humans since the 1700s. So in 1700, it was about four pounds of sugar that a person consumed in a year. In 2012, it was 180 pounds. And if you look at the rates of increase of diabetes and heart disease, it's exactly the same graph, right? So sugar is having the number one contribution and it's all kinds of sugars. We, uh, I, well, the person that just told me, I dropped 12 pounds. She was like, but stevia is okay, right? No, it's not. It's a highly processed food-like substance, non-nutritious. It is something that is spurring our body to make all those systemic changes. We think it's okay for us because it's low calorie. That is not the thing to pay attention to. It's super misleading. Obesity is up a thousand percent. Let's see, what's the time period? The last hundred years. Type two diabetes is up over 300%. It's even a big risk they used to call it adult onset diabetes. Now they have to call it type two because even children are developing it, right? So in 1890, the diabetes rate was 75 people out of 100,000. It was still pretty rare. Now it's in 2012, it was 8,000 people out of 100,000. It's getting really common. Has anybody noticed dialysis centers creeping up everywhere around town? I was noticing that when I was living in Denver. High blood pressure was only about 5% of people in 1890. Now it's something like 70%. Are, we are changing the functioning of our bodies by the way we're eating more than anything else. And it's devastating, really. And it's not hard to change. Why don't we know this? Because I'm seeing some of the wow emojis coming across, which I appreciate, right? Um, I would love if you guys would put in the chat, because I really want you to take something away from this that changes your life. Our food environment is deranged. Our food environment is deranged. Put the word deranged in the chat, because as long as you're trying to eat the way everyone around you is trying to eat and the way that you've learned to eat in recent years, you're gonna be in a deranged environment that's gonna keep you sick and overweight. Thank you, all right, Dera it's deranged. All right, now why don't we know this? Because we are constantly being misled. We are constantly getting all, these pack all this packaging. I love this slide because all of the that packaging worked for me. It was really appealing. Oh, it's 100% whole grain. Almost everything that says that is not whole grain anymore. It's been highly processed and refined. It's a processed grain. What they're saying is it was a whole grain when we started the processing. That's really misleading, right? Made with organic wheat. Organic might be a good thing. I liked organic, but does that certify that it's healthy? All these things seem to suggest to me, non-GMO project verified, real, made with real fruit. That was, I think that's on a jelly package, right? That is a highly processed food. The sugar has been highly concentrated. The fiber's been taken out, does not hit the body like real fruit, right? All right, 
So we're being very, very misled. Our food environment is full of poor quality food. So to be someone who's actually eating healthy in this environment is to be someone who eats quite differently, right? Who's really looking for looking at food in a different way and turning that stuff down. So what I've seen in the research recently is more than half of the food we're eating is highly processed food-like substances, more than half. So if I have the idea, I don't eat that much of that stuff. I don't eat that much of the processed food. I think I do better than average. Let me tell you, let's look at this number. If you rated the American diet, on a scale of one to a hundred in terms of nutritional quality, what do you think it would rate? What do you think the score would be? I'm going to give you guys a minute to respond to this. What's the, what do you think the nutritional quality of the American diet is out of a hundred? You were following the rules, right? Kristen says 20, 30. Karen, thank you. Anybody else? Some people here already know because <laughs> they've been through these before. 28, <laughs> 35, Lynn is hedging her bets. All right, I'm gonna tell you what, what I've seen in the research is our diet scores an 11 out of 100. I'm gonna cry again. That's terrible. No wonder, no wonder most of us are developing cardiometabolic disease, no wonder over 80% of us are overweight or obese, and that just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Our, the nutritional quality of our diets on 11. So what if I'm eating way better, twice as good as the average person? I'm scoring a 22. What if I'm doing way, way, way better? What if I'm way, 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 way better? What if I'm getting a 50 out of 100? We're not close enough. We're not close enough to eating what's actually nutritious for our bodies in this food environment. Is this scary? It might sound scary. I don't want it to sound scary because people tell me all the time, this makes sense. This is easy and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. It does not have to be, you know, if, uh, I mean, it is scary the way people are eating in our society now. So there's not only is our food environment a big mess, but we're getting all this marketing all the time telling us these things are healthy. This is good for you. And so we're looking carefully at the packages and going, I feel pretty good about this, right? So it's a major trap. Even the smart, wise men and women that I know who are doing way better than average with their eating, who feel like I eat pretty healthy, they're eating too much of the non-nutritious stuff and way too little of the nutritious, life-giving, real food. I was looking at labels all the time. I was spending a lot of time in the health food aisle looking for the better alternatives, right? Real nutritious food doesn't have these labels. You can almost end up thinking that this stuff is healthier than those things in the produce aisle that don't have labels right? It's, it's hard for human beings to, to get through this, to wade through this and figure out what's good for us. The articles we're reading are not helping us. The books we're reading are not helping us. There is a $14 billion marketing industry uh, about food marketing in the United States alone, and the most profitable stuff for that. So I talked about cravingful, highly processed, non-nutritious food-like substances. Let's look at another HP, highly promoted. Another HP, highly profitable. So the things that are being promoted to us all the time, this is good, this is good for you. See, see the packaging with this $14 billion industry are highly processed, non-nutritious food-like substances that are highly profitable for the food industry to sell, right? So it's stuff that's, that's cheap. It's stuff that's shelf stable. Uh, I always think about when we went into the pandemic and boy, we were looking for the shelf stable stuff. We're like, I don't know when we're gonna be able to get to the grocery store again. I don't know what's gonna happen at the grocery stores. I just need to get a bunch of pastas and, and you know, quick to fix shelf stable stuff, right? So 80% of the food in the grocery store 
has added sugar. Have you noticed that? Even things that don't taste sweet, that you don't think you're eating sugar, have sugar in them. And one of the ways the food industry has gotten sneaky about this, one of their, their cheap tricks, they know we're looking for sugar in the top ingredients. We don't wanna buy things that have sugar in the top ingredients. The smart ones of us, we're, we're trying to avoid that. So what they're doing now is using four different kinds of sugar. So there, if you look through all the ingredients, there could be honey, there could be molasses, there could be dextrose, maltrose, there could be all stevia, right? I bought things, even here, I've bought things that I thought, okay, I think this doesn't look like it has a lot of sugar. I'm reading in another language that's making it harder for me. But then I get home and I can immediately smell. It's super sweet. Oh, I see stevia. Stevia is super sweet, way sweeter than sugar. So they can have that pretty low in the ingredients and it can still taste very sweet to us, which is very exciting to our brain. Like our brain is gonna crave that. So 80% of the food in the grocery store has added sugar and 57% of the food we eat is highly processed, right? So this is why we're not doing well. It's become normal to develop heart disease, diabetes, overweight and obesity. The, the way we're eating is highly lacking in nutrition. So we have flipped a switch. Our body's saying, eat more, eat more, forage around. You do not have to feel this anxiety of searching for more and more food, of feeling really hungry. That's not a natural human state. That's something that's been created by the way we're eating. I'm gonna just check the chat. Agave is another one, right? Makes you feel like you're not crazy. Good, Kristen. They are taking advantage of us. Yeah, I know. Video games, our cell phones, there's all kinds of addiction risk in our current environment. We really, I, I mean, I'm really devoted to helping educate women and men to know this does not have to be this way. All right, so back to Lily. So the first step is eating the slender way, right? Anything else I wanna say about Lily? You heard her story. She thought she knew how to do this. She thought she knew how to eat healthy. She discovered that she was just far enough off to not get there, right? It's not our fault. We can be really smart, really well read. What we used to do, what we did seemed to work and it quits working. We gotta quit being the fly in the window, right? I'm going, fly, I got the door open here. Quit bashing your head against the window. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do is let you out the door. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the second step. All right, so I really want you to see how the five steps to getting slender for good are completely different from dieting, right? Are completely different from the weight loss approaches you're finding out there. So we are flipping a switch in our body. We're, so I hear this from people all the time, just heard this from somebody yesterday. I'm losing weight without feeling hungry. I don't think that's ever been the case, right? So. A lot of the times when people come to me and they're saying, I've got a lot of weight to lose, I got over a hundred pounds to lose, they are eating as little as possible and it is not getting them weight loss. It is heartbreaking. They're feeling really hungry. They're feeling really anxious. So we really want to flip the switch back. We want to give our body what will make us feel satisfied, what will get those hormones that manage whether we feel hungry or satisfied corrected, right? We want to reset our weight down to a lower weight so our body defends that lower weight like it used to defend our higher weight, right? If you've, if you've done weight loss recently and you lost a little bit of weight, then you got really hungry and your body really slowed your metabolism and the weight came right back. Um, you know what I'm talking about. We want a whole reset, not a forcing our body to let go, let go, let go. And then it's going to fight back. We want to reset. So this is happening because our body's getting the nutrition it needs and it goes, we're good. I don't need to make you hungry. I don't need to make you anxious, right? Thank you for giving me what I needed. Let's go do something. It's a totally different experience. So I wanna just tell quickly a little bit about Elaine's story here. Elaine is a woman I have known for 40 years probably and really admire. She's a really smart, practical, inspiring person. She was a common sense, healthy eater 
who she knew not to do dieting. So she is better off than some of us. She's like, I'm not going to do dieting. That just looks like it adds up to more weight. Uh, but as she was approaching 70 years old during the pandemic, she thought, you know, I am watching myself put off too many life activities with the idea that I'll do that when I lose a few pounds. Um, and she decided to just step in and try to learn what Ginny is teaching. So she's so happy now to have found a way of eating that makes sense, that consistently works for looking and feeling her best. She's gone from wearing a size 16 to a size 10. And uh, she just feels so much more confident that she's going to be living a healthy, active, independent life for a long, long time. Early on, she noticed aches and pains went away. Her mind got clearer. One of the things I love that she talks about is I can just prioritize and problem solve so much better again. My brain and my mood are just so much better. I don't get so frustrated or angry. She says the best thing is I, I feel like I value myself much more highly. Like I'm really not just feeding my family well, but I'm feeding myself well. It's a priority every day and I'm happy with how, who I am and what I look like. And how did she do this? She decided, I'm just following this approach. I'm just gonna follow this one approach that works. I'm gonna find a way to enjoy it. And I'm gonna do it the rest of my life, right? So she maintains a resolve to keep eating this way. One of the reasons she needs to maintain resolve is her husband has a job where he's bringing home uh, like catered food every day that mostly is not nutritious, right? So she, it used to be like, well, of course I'm gonna eat this. This is free, this is what we've got. This is already prepared. No, nope. of course I'm gonna eat what works for my body and I'm gonna eat what works for my body three times a day, day after day, and I'm going to love it. So she's happy with how her body responds. She appreciates what a difference it makes. And, and also one of the things that she emphasizes is I'm super clear. How to eat. I'm not confused and, and like constantly looking for the latest tip. The latest tip will lead you astray pretty much every time. I really want, it's another mistake I want to lead you away from. We live in an environment, part of the de derangement is, oh, here's a new tip that might change everything. And we feel like I'm going to find a new tip that's going to change everything. And that's not what's going to lead us to good results. There's not a new tip every day. You know, find an approach that works and then do that. Find a way to enjoy it every way. You can, you can always, if you want to, make it more exciting. Ooh, I've been eating this like every day for weeks. I'm tired of this. I'm going to eat that now. But we don't go back and throw out our, our fundamental principles that work for our body. That needs to change. So we flip a switch. So that's the second step. Third step is to crave the good foods. I love this picture of Colleen. It was just her birthday and she just posted uh, posted this picture. Colleen is someone who came to me first to, to change her drinking. I've got to do something about my drinking, but I'm really scared because I really feel like it's important. And it's part of the joy in life. And even if I can take a break from it, most days when we go to the cottage, I don't know how to not drink, right? Probably a lot of you can relate to something like that. But so we worked together for a year on let's change the relationship with drinking so that you feel not only I don't need to drink, but you feel good about it. Like I drink things that are good for my body and I don't want to put alcohol in my body anymore, right? And then the next, and then she said, okay, I need to change my eating. She only wanted to lose four pounds though. And she's like, I don't know if I should work with you because I really don't have that much weight to lose. But here's the thing, I've been up and down in my weight for decades and I know it's not good for my body. I know I have cravings for non-nutritious things and I know it's gonna impact me because even if I don't really see a lot of signs on my body, can't be good for my body going up and down 20 pounds every other year. And now my mom's got dementia and I don't wanna end up there. I feel like it's really related to our eating and drinking. So help me with this. So she was scared though, like, like I was scared. Am I gonna be sad? Am I gonna have to cut out all the things I really love? 
So it looks back though, and she says, here's the thing. I thought it was so important to be eating and drinking that way. I would overindulge, and then I would restrict for a while to try to correct my weight, and then I would overindulge for a while. She says, but looking back, I was a distraught, joyless mess, unable to handle life's challenges. So she was really worried about cravings, feeling like it was going to be sad and difficult, but she really learned how to leave those cravings for the non-nutritious things behind and how to shift to actually craving the good foods. Do you know, even our taste buds turn over in a matter of 14 days. Our brain pathways start to change, so our reward systems start to change in terms of what we, what we actually enjoy. So people tell me all the time, this is not hard. I enjoy eating this way. There's no reason I would go back. So Colleen ended up dropping 14 pounds. She's thrilled getting to this weight. Uh, she feels, I'm looking at her quotes, free and slim and fantastic. She says, I bound up and down the stairs. I've gone off anti-anxiety, antidepressant medications. So her mood has transformed. You know, it's fun for me because I get to see people on Zoom and I get to see people on their Facebook pages completely transform. And it's that thing that I saw in myself that I went from a little bit dead inside eating and drinking the way I was eating and drinking to so much more alive. I feel more young and youthful and healthy and just normal, I don't know, good, like a human should feel in my 60s than I felt in my 40s and 50s. And that's what I see in Colleen. She is bounding around the world with her husband now. Um, she just feels like, yep, yeah, I'm not going to develop dementia. There's no guarantees, right? But we can really change the likelihood of those kinds of diseases when we change how we eat. So she really eliminated her cravings for cocktails and for sweets. She worked for a chocolate company. So she knows what that marketing is all about too. Now she thoroughly enjoys eating foods that actually nourish her body. I think she's maintained this weight loss for three years now. This is almost unheard of. If you look at the research, going more than a year, sustaining weight loss is unheard of with those other approaches. It's just, ugh, makes me crazy. So our gut bacteria stop yelling for the sweet foods and the snack foods. That changes. Our taste buds change. So nutritious foods taste better and better. I love hearing this from people. The reward centers in our brain change. How we think about what, what's a treat changes, right? Our, preference, our preferences change. It's, it's wonderful. That's what I wanted, right? If that's possible, I wanna be able to eat in a way that makes my body really healthy and happy without feeling sad and miserable and deprived. Anybody? No deprivation. I want to crave the good foods. Can you see how craving the good foods makes it easy to eat the foods that make your body happy? So this is a step most people have never heard of. As far as I know, I came up with this step. This is why having someone who knows the way of eating makes a big difference, but having a psychologist help you can really make a big difference because I know how to help you change that, right? All right. Fourth step, we achieve our healthy, our slender, healthy weight. Hey, Kristen, isn't she so dang cute? Uh, a lot of my clients are in their 50s and 60s, but I'm so happy when someone in their 40s decides to do this earlier because, man, you know, to wait until your 50s, to wait until your 60s to change this, it can feel like, oh, I missed so many good years of living in that slender, healthy weight. So Kristen was, uh, is one of my clients who decided to, to go for this and she got to her slender healthy weight. She's so dang adorable, right? So part of what happens is you quit being hungry the way you used to be. You start craving the good foods, you get to your weight, right? So my initial goal weight was, oh, I don't know, I've been in the 190s for a while now, maybe, Maybe I'll go for 150 in a size 10. I feel like that's probably the best I could do at this age. But then as I ate this way, I just flew past that number. There was no reason to stop 
at that weight. And that's what a lot of us find. You don't have to stay at some over 40, over 50 weight. You can get to a weight that feels really good and comfortable. Um, I think about Kristen, I think she's on the next slide who, yeah, she's at a weight she hasn't seen since seventh grade and she has been maintaining this weight for years. So um, it's a great moment and it's a tricky moment, right? It's a moment where people tend to go back to eating their old ways and gain the weight back. So figuring out now, how do I keep eating this way? How much food do I need to add before I'm at the right amount? That's, that's part of what needs to happen at this, at this stage. You quit getting the exciting feedback of my weight keeps going down, <laughs> right? And then, okay, uh, what is this stage all about, right? Um, so getting to this point is really, uh, is really important. And then there's a, a certain amount of support that can really help you with what do I do next, right? So you can live slender for good, right? So I've got a couple of slender for good rock stars there who did the program several years ago, one in her forties, one, the other one is 70 now. They continue to love eating this way in addition to feeling so comfortable in this size, right? So Kristen, Krista is a busy high level professional and mom who got to her seventh grade weight. She's now happy to be in a bikini, happy to be dating again. Um, so I'm always thrilled when somebody can do this earlier than some of us did this. And then there's Michaelina. Michaelina is a beautiful 70 year old woman who was great at dieting. She's always been great at clothes and makeup. And like, she, she will tell you, I know how to hide things. Uh, I know how to help other people hide things with their clothing. But Michaelina was this uh, fastidious dieter. She was very good at the calorie cutting and it wasn't proving very effective anymore. Plus she had high liver enzymes. She had a very upset gut. So she was having trouble even being able to travel anymore. She had pain and inflammation, was wanting to be able to get up and down off the floor with her grandson and et cetera. And so she decided to try this eating approach, even though like I'm a pro, I am the best dieter in the world. I'm very disciplined. I told her that's not the best approach though. What if you could actually eat what's good for your body and change all this, right? So. So she did, she decided to embrace this way of eating. I think she went from a size 14 to a size 10, really likes her size a lot better. But the biggest change is she's actually kind of approaching eating from a, an attitude of abundance. It's like the first time in her life she has viewed food as a friend. Like she, that's not the case for a lot of my clients. A lot of them are like, I love food, are you kidding me? But no. Michaelina did not love food. She saw food as dangerous. Now she loves food. She's eating abundant, nutritious food and thoroughly enjoying it, craving the good foods, happily, easily maintaining this weight. She's dancing with her husband in the kitchen. She's enjoying the compliments he's giving her, right? Um, and she just feels so much more confident about her future. She's able to do the gardening and the playing with her grandson again, just the gut issues that she had lived with for a long, long time are not there anymore. And her liver uh, healed also the liver enzymes. So eating in a way that actually makes your body healthy and happy. I'm going to cry again. Um, changes your weight in a way that is sustainable, in a way that makes sense to your body and makes sense to your brain and becomes easy easy to do because it makes sense, right? So I just had somebody this week who's just like three weeks into the Slender for Good program say, this is the first, I've done a lot of dieting in my life. This is the first time I'm actually doing something that makes sense. And I'm amazed that I don't feel hungry. And I, and he was saying that I just feel like you explain things really well. And I really am able to trust you because I can see the research you've done. I can see how much sense this makes. Uh, I just feel like this is easier, easier and more reasonable than anything I've done. So this is one thing people say to me all the time. Uh, we talk about it all the time is it, this is just how I eat. This is not a diet. This is just how I eat. And I love it. Why would I ever go back? right? So I'm really encouraging you to step off the path you've been on of 
dieting, looking for the latest tip, trying to force your body to eat less, trying to find ways to eat the treats, the chip nipples that you're calling treats, considering them treats even. Um, step off that path and don't do something that's a little tweaking of it around the edges, a little bit better than other people are doing. It's not enough. We need to be on a whole different path. We need to be eating in a way that completely changes our lives. It's up to you. I mean, you can keep tweaking it around the edges if you're happy enough with your results. I got to a point where I was like, I, this is not working for me. I could picture myself ending up in the nursing home in the next five to 10 years. Um, I kind of think I'd be dead by now almost because my sleep was so bad. Um, if I had kept eating and drinking the way I was, I could barely walk at that point. I don't know. I think I might be in the nursing home by now and, and on my way to dying, really. So um, now I think I'm going to live well into my 90s and still be hiking, right? So I, I there's hundreds of people that I'm watching who have come into my sphere in one way or another. And it, it changes, it can change big things in big ways, right? So you need to get really clear what works and how it's absolutely different from what doesn't work. And so I do this event partly to invite you. Are you kind of ready to step onto a whole different path to get a, a guide in this process? Because I can't give you all the answers in two hours, right? I can't give you enough answers that you can probably change all this. Although some people go away and make big enough changes that they're, they're happy about it. But what are you clear about so far that you want to stop doing, right? What's the path you're stepping off of? And what's the path you're stepping onto? If we stay on the path we're on, we can keep eating a little healthier than other people, but we're probably not going to get all the way to these big, exciting, dramatic results that way, right? I wanted exciting, dramatic results. I wanted to turn this around. Um, I, what I want to let you know is there's a way to get to easy, natural, sustainable weight loss. It does not have to be this hard. I'm just going to check the chat. Yeah, Krista, Kristen, you've been realizing you're tweaking. Right, I know. It is just part of our... Um, Michaelina is here. Good to see you. It is just part of human psychology, especially in the environment we live in, that we're going to look for ways to go back to eating the way we used to eat, to eating the way other people around us are eating. It's pretty natural. It really helps to have a community to step into where we're all eating this way and we're supporting each other, right? Um, it makes a big difference. So the target is to live slender for good, right? Like, I just eat this way. I just love eating this way. I know it's different from how other people are eating, but it makes sense and it's not hard. Um, I can make it hard by going back to, oh, today I'm going to eat the way other people eat. I can make it hard because those things are cravingful. Uh, those things make change my gut. They change my brain. They change my hormones, right? I can flip the switch again pretty, pretty easily. And so I just decided I didn't want to do that anymore. All right. So if you haven't, schedule a slender breakthrough call with me if you feel like I could use somebody to guide me on this. And maybe Ginny could be the one. I'm happy to talk to you about it, whether you end up thinking this is uh, this program that I do might be the right thing for you or not. But I just really encourage you, get on the phone with me, get some clarity about what's, what's wrong with your approach. You know, where's the problem? We keep trying to solve the wrong problem. And so we're finding the wrong solutions all the time. So first, let's get clearer about what's the problem in your eating approach and what would be the next steps for you. And this is a highly valuable call. I've had people go away and change their lives for years after without doing anything else. And I'm offering it at no charge. It's a $300 value. Why do I do that? So one thing is you can see I'm really emotional and passionate about this. I want people to know what you're being sold out there is not going to work. You're going to feel like it's your fault. It's going to affect your health. And it doesn't have to be that way. There are easy 
there's an easy natural way to get sustainable weight loss. I want you to find that because I have a passion about this because the world needs us, needs us healthy and well for as long as possible, right? I've had many people join me lately who are saying, I just had a family member in the hospital and boy, do I want to avoid needing the hospital. Like it's getting harder and harder to feel like you can get good care. The, the healthcare system is being completely overwhelmed by this exact problem that we're talking about, right? The, the diabetes rate, the heart disease rate, all the things that are being affected, the pain, the, the back pain issues that are being affected by our overweight and obesity epidemic. All right, so I have this passion. So one reason I offer this for no charge is I have this passion about letting people know, quit doing that, quit doing the things that don't work that lead to even worse results. And the other reason is I have this highly effective program, Slender for Good program. I'm not gonna tell you all about it today, uh, but I will tell you it's hundreds of times more effective than other programs out there. It's way more effective. And it's partly because I have an eating approach that works. It's partly because I've created this comprehensive program that helps people crave the good, right? And get all the way to living slender. And it's partly because I don't take anybody into my program uh, except by invitation only. I need to meet people. I need to have the sense that you're likely to be successful in this program, that you're a good fit, right? And so meeting with people one-on-one -on -one is also serving me to make sure that I invite people into the program who are likely to be highly successful, right? So if you went through this whole program and you're like, nope, dieting, calorie cutting is the answer, this is not, it's probably not worth getting on the phone with me, right? If you're looking for a magic pill, a magic potion, um, a magic elixir, like I still see those ads on Facebook for keto gummies and go, wow, look how magical that is. <laughs> but we kind of know that's, that's not going to work. That doesn't make any sense. But if you're still looking for some kind of magic pill, I'm not going to be the person to get on the phone with. But if you're feeling like, no, I want to learn how to eat to make my body really healthy and happy. I want to know how that works. I want to know what would get me there. Then it could be really worth getting on the phone, right? So if you've stayed with me this long, you probably you probably are a fit for that phone call. And I encourage you to book because they do they do fill up. All right. So when you go to that link, there's going to be a questionnaire there. It's going to take you to my scheduling page. There's a questionnaire, super helpful for making sure that we use our time well on the call. I don't think people find that to be too tedious. Yeah, there's no obligation when you get on the call. Uh, one of the big things that people will think about is, okay, I, can, I want to change this, but I'm not sure... I'm not sure now's a good time for me because I got that cruise coming up or it's going to be my birthday or, you know, I think I'll wait to the first of the year. And that's partly because we get scared that it's going to suck, right? What if it doesn't? What if you learn exactly how to eat so you don't have to be confused anymore? There's no more guesswork. And what if you find it's actually thoroughly enjoyable and it's simple and it's and it makes sense? I hear this from my clients all the time. This is not hard. It's simple, it makes sense, and it's thoroughly enjoyable. I wish I had learned this years ago, right? So there's very little risk. You, you're trying to put it off is probably a mistake. That's something Kristen could probably speak to too. A lot of people will, will come back to me a year later, two years later, okay, I need to focus on this now. And then they're like, I, I wish I had focused on this earlier. It's just not as hard as you think it has to be. All right, so here's my email to stay in touch with me. I'd love to hear your feedback about the event. Um, I'm going to go in the chat and see if you have any questions. In closing, I really want to say I have helped hundreds of people. It's virtually impossible to find good answers out there in the marketplace. Just be careful about what you're finding out there. Be careful about the idea that you think you're eating healthy already and it's just not working. We're just not. I just haven't met one person. Almost everyone tells me I already eat healthy and they have too much misinformation mixed in and it's not your fault. Um, it's not hard to learn this, but the first step really is unlearning the things that the mistaken ideas that are keeping us on the wrong path, right? 
with the right um, guidance and the right eating approach, it's not hard. You can totally do it. Oh, thank you. Kristen is saying Ginny is definitely accessible. <laughs> yeah, I want people to succeed once they become my client, especially like I'm in there. I'm your coach, right? You don't question your food choices tons of times a day. That's a great, that's a great example, Kristen. Yeah, actually the research shows we are making on average over 200 eating and drinking decisions every day. This is ridiculous. This is exhausting. This is way too much thinking and obsessing about what we're eating and drinking. It doesn't make sense for a human to have to be thinking about eating and drinking that many times a day. Yeah, so that's one of the things I hear from people. Yeah, it works is a great thing I hear. <laughs> I didn't ask you to attend and say that. Um, a lot of people do come, come back. You don't wanna track, the scale triggers you, yeah. Right. So I do have people who find that like, oh, the scale is so triggering for me. I have to stay off the scale. Yeah, for me, I weighed myself every day because um, it wasn't triggering. I'm a scientist. I could just watch the numbers over time and it was helpful feedback to me. But other people are like, I cannot do that. And so some people weigh themselves once a week, some people once a month, some people never step on the scale because it's so triggering and they just go by how their clothes feel to figure out what's right for them. Debbie, yes, what portions of protein fat? Yes, exactly. That's what I found out exactly. How much protein do I need? How much fat do I need? How much fruit, how much vegetables, how much grains? It got super clear when I got into the research. And that's what I, that's what got really, really helpful to me. Approximately how long would it take to shed 44 pounds? Just going through questions here, right? Uh, yes, I'm available to my clients for questions throughout the process. Yes, absolutely. We have question and answer se live sessions and I invite people to email me. So I can just tell you, uh, typically when people follow this approach, faithfully, fairly faithfully, right? They're not doing, you know, 10 other approaches mixed in with this approach. They're doing this approach. Um, they can lose typically one to two pounds a week. It's a little bit slow and that's part of what makes it sustainable. The body doesn't feel like it has to fight back. I do have some, like I showed Kristen's picture in the red dress. Uh, she tells me, I don't remember it this way, but she tells me, Jenny, I didn't drop and didn't drop three weeks and then I would drop seven pounds or 10 pounds. And then I didn't drop and that was like her whole trajectory. That's how she remembers it. I don't know. Yes, you want, Lynn, I wanna stop thinking about my food choices so much, way too much energy on that. Exactly. I want my relationship to, with food to be as simple as my relationship with alcohol. I love working with people who already changed their relationship with alcohol because it's many of the same principles when it comes to our eating. And when you learn how to eat to really nourish your body, it really supports, um, it really supports a better relationship with drinking too. All right, I'm so happy that Michaelina was here too. I love her. I have wonderful women that I, that I get to work with that you can probably see on my face. I love her, right? I want food to be my friend. I love that, Teresa. Okay, maybe there's one more question here. Okay, you have so many questions, I know. That's why I don't leave a whole lot of time for question and answer here because they're all a little bit individual. Yeah, I look forward to speaking with you. All right, this can absolutely change. Uh, so I want you to learn how that works. If you want to learn how that works, let's get on the phone. Thank you so much for coming. I hope this was helpful. Feel free to email me what you liked about this. I, I'm new to doing this in a two hour block, but I think that I'm covering the key points that have the, the opportunity to really change things. So feel free to email me with, this was really helpful. I really was left with that question. I think it'd be more helpful if you spelled this out more. I'd love to get your feedback. This is absolutely doable. It's enjoyable. It's simple. It's, it's easy and natural to lose weight this way and you know, so many of us transform all kinds of health issues and feel way better. Kristen, who left already, um, she's in her 40s, says, says she feels like she's in her 20s now, like better than in her 20s. All right. 
This is totally doable. It's not hard. I'm so glad you came today. Email me or get on the phone with me and let me know what was helpful, what other questions were left for you. Thanks for spending this time today. I hope it was transformative for you. Take care.